Hey there, fellow FUMSers. Did you know you can display your disdain for this stupid disease on a hat, a t-shirt, a sweatshirt, a phone case, a coffee mug, or several other products? Well, you can. Just head over to the FUMS merchandise shop and wear your FUMS attitude proudly. Go to FUMSnow.com forward slash shop and get your FUMS on today. Welcome to the FUMS Now podcast show, where you'll gain information, inspiration, and motivation for living your best life with multiple sclerosis. Find us online at FUMSnow.com. I'm your host, Kathy Reagan Young. Today I'm chatting with Holly Bertone, a breast cancer and Hashimoto survivor who turned those two significant health challenges into a passion to help transform the lives of women with chronic illness. She's also the author of the best-selling Amazon.com book, Thriving in the Workplace with Autoimmune Disease, Know Your Rights, Resolve Conflict, and Reduce Stress. It's the first book to educate others on autoimmune disease as a legal disability in the U.S. workplace. It's such an interesting book, and she's such an interesting woman. Let's go meet her. Hi, Holly. Thanks so much for being here today. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Kathy, for having me here. And I just, I really look forward to connecting with everyone. Yay. Um, You have so much to offer. I'm so excited about this. Okay. So I guess if you would please just share a bit about your background and what brought you to the point of writing this amazing book. Oh, thank you. Sure. So um, I'm going to actually start real quick where I was before I got sick. Perfect. And uh, the stuff that I'm going to share is not to brag. It just is, I want people to understand, you know, kind of where I was to where I went. Yeah. Um, but I was one of those kind of quintessential overachievers. Um, I had uh, 10 years in human resources, 15 years in project management, and I had actually gotten hired in to uh, one of those three letter federal agencies that they make TV shows about. <laughs> and that's all I can say. Um, but they hired me in as the chief of staff, which was a really high level position, uh, very comfortable six figures, and you know, very successful in my career. In my free time, I was racing Xterra triathlons, which are the off road triathlons. And I was racing mountain bikes. I was the only civilian on the Marine Corps mountain bike team. And, uh, yeah, just, you know, that was my life. It was super fun Sheesh. and super crazy. And, you know, that was me like super mm-hmm. healthy. And then on my 39th birthday, I was diagnosed with uh, breast cancer. Happy which birthday. Was, yes. Right. Oh, happy freaking birthday to me. Right. You know? And, you know, I always say some women get diamonds, some women get flowers, you right. know, maybe even you a card. I get breast cancer. Mm. Yay. So I always kind of said uh, that was my gift. And yeah. uh, it took me a while to understand what that meant. But, you know, I, I, I still hang on to that. Um, but the crazy part was my boyfriend at the time, two days later, proposed. And oh, then, my gosh. Yeah, I know. Crazy pants. And then um, so 10 days after treatment ended, so I did chemo, uh, surgery, chemo, radiation. Mm. 10 days after treatment ended. Uh, we got married. So I was still very sick and bald on our wedding day. Aww. And then one month later, he deployed to Afghanistan. Oh, God. So, you know, so I've got a new husband, a new stepson. And, you know, he was with his his biological mom the whole time that my husband was deployed. But that gave me, um, you know, like four or five months of just really quiet time at the house to recover from everything. Mm. And my health kept getting worse. It was not getting better. So, you know, I kept going to my doctors and I'm like, something's not right. Something's not right. And the response that I got from them was, oh, well, you've been through a lot with, you know, chemo and cancer and, you know, everything like it's going to take you a while to recover. And I was like, okay, Mm. I literally just went from being, right, this uber fit, uber triathlete, right? And I can't get off the couch. And the Mm. women, and not to compare, but the women in like my breast cancer support group, they're out running these, you know, 5k pink ribbon right. races. Right. I can't get not. out of bed, right? Mm. Something's not right. So, you know, the the first thing I always like to tell people is to always 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 advocate for yourself and for your health. Mm-hmm. And I was not taking no for an answer from my doctor. So I kept pushing for tests, I kept pushing for answers, and it took them a year but I was finally diagnosed with Hashimoto's, Mm. which, um, you know, I'm like, what? 
like, is this some kind of town in Japan? Like I had no idea, never heard of this thing. Right. And, um, but it's basically the autoimmune component of hypothyroidism. So you have a really, really slow and sluggish thyroid. Mm. So, you know, a lot of fatigue, a lot of weight gain, um, you know, those are the fun Mm -hmm. symptoms of Hashimoto's (laughs) and, you know, and some people can take um, you know, Synthroid or other types mm-hmm. of medicine and be totally fine. I was one of those people that, you know, the medicine helped to a small degree, but my mm-hmm. symptoms were still really bad. Like mm-hmm. it just extreme chronic fatigue, a lot of migraines, um, you know, IBS just through the roof, um, some, some pretty s- mm. severe joint pain. But the fatigue just trumped everything. And yeah. this was, I was diagnosed with breast cancer in 2010, Hashimoto's 2011. Jeez. And my, you know, at that point, you know, I take, I took a step down from work because I just, you know, couldn't be the super right. person, super mom, just juggling work, this crazy, hectic management position and mm-hmm. a new family and being sick. So I took a step down and they were fine. And my symptoms were rough, but they were manageable. Right. Mm -hmm. So I could still go into work. Um, you know, I I had my symptoms, but I could still function a full-time job and come home and take care of my family. And it, you know, it was miserable, but it was doable. Right. And then in 2017, my health just, I don't know what the flare up was, but it was just a flare up of epic proportions to the Mm -hmm. point where my doctors wanted to put me on IV drips and, you know, put me into the Mm -hmm. hospital and this whole thing. And my management had changed at the same time. They wanted absolutely nothing to do with me being sick and being away from work. So long story short, they rescinded my FMLA now. (sighs) Yeah. (laughs) Which is totally illegal. Yeah. Um, Just just to, so it's real clear. FMLA is family medical leave act. I'm sure everybody listening knows that, but just always want to Yes, correct. Clarify. So if you are, if um, private employers over 50 employees and you have to be working, I think for about a year. So, um, you know, that, that entitles you to FMLA and it's basically unpaid leave of up to 12 work weeks throughout the year um, that, you know, you can take off, not just for your own medical condition, but mm-hmm. to care for others. Um, you it's know, just you basically a- holding your position for you. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So that's yeah. kind of the, 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 the quick, but yeah, they illegally rescinded it. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm like, okay, I'm making a very comfortable six figure salary. I, I mean, my health was literally a crisis level at this point. And, you know, they, they blocked any kind of way to transfer. My husband and I had, you know, I mean, he, you know, we got married right after breast cancer, like super, Mm -hmm. super supportive husband. But at the same time, like he's got to, he's got to protect his family and make sure that, you know, we're going to be able to, you know, survive Mm -hmm. financially. Right. But it came to the point where like, I, I am literally on my deathbed. Like I, I have to resign. And that was the decision Mm -hmm. that we made. Because I looked and I looked and I looked and I looked and I looked. I think I hit the end of the internet. I could not find any resources out there for individuals yeah. who have an, an autoimmune disease in the workplace and like what our rights and responsibilities are. There's a ton of information out there about autoimmune disease. There's a ton of information out there about, you know, disability rights in the workplace, right. but there's nothing that, that merges the two together. Right. So you and I'm like, them. yeah, I did. Right. So, um, yeah, that was rough. I had to resign and take care of my health and my family first. And then once I started to recover a little bit, I, and, and I love the F U M S I kind of said (laughs) F U yeah, my former place of employment and decided to take that situation and write the book thriving in the workplace with autoimmune disease and basically try to help other individuals who have an autoimmune disease who, you know, maybe in the same situation that they actually don't have to quit their job. They, they can still stay employed because guess what? You actually have rights in the workplace. Yeah, that, let me just tell you, I, this so like late in the game, finding this book, I'm like, damn it, I wish I'd have known about <laughs> this because really when I left my job and honestly, I worked for a great company and a great boss who actually said to me, do you just need some time off? And I thought, 
he was talking about like a week or something, you know, mm-hmm. and I thought, no, that's not going to do it. Like I'm literally having car accidents. I can't, I couldn't discern between the gas pedal and the brake. A, a, right. a week off, it just isn't going to do it. Now I understand about accommodations and, you know, oh God, I wish, I, but anyway, I digress. I wish um, I had my book. <laughs> yeah, right? Right. Know, right. It's so great that you wrote this though. And, and really to have to, to have to do the research that you had to have done for this book, if you're mid flare for MSers, um, you know, we are at our most vulnerable points when we're having to figure this shit out. <laughs> so thank you for pulling it all together. This is going to help so many people. And I'm, I am just so thrilled to bring you to my community because I just think it's going to help so many people. Oh, thank I really, and that's, that's the goal. You know, I, you know, my, my whole mantra, you know, pink fortitude is all about building fortitude. And, you know, I just, that's my whole mantra is fortitude. So if I can give that fortitude, you know, to, to your community and to say, Hey, you know what, you're not alone. Number one. And number two, you do have resources and you have rights and you know, you, you can be supported. Well, and you laid them all out so nicely. I mean, again, to, uh, there's no way when I was in the midst of this flare, I could have done the research that you have so beautifully sewn together oh, thank <laughs> in this you. Book, no, I, so. when I was when I was midfiller I was just like in a ball you know right. crying and shaking right. so that was right. pretty much all I could do and sleep yeah, yeah. so ugh. well thanks for that again um I, I and you know I just found this book so well researched and so well written very clear and full of a ton of resources so thanks for writing it from on on behalf of the entire autoimmune community, <laughs> I would like to say thank you. Um, but okay, so let's get into it. Let's start with a really basic question: Is mm-hmm. autoimmune disease considered a disability here in the U.S.? It is, and the thing is, even if you have an autoimmune disease and you don't consider yourself disabled, yeah, in the United States, you are covered under the 2008. ADA Amendment Act, which um, doesn't specifically call out autoimmune disease. It doesn't call out any diseases because they didn't want to, you know, list a million different ones. Right. Um, but it does talk specifically about major bodily functions, including um, immune, digestive, endocrine, and lymphatic. Mm. So yeah, autoimmune diseases are covered. All yeah. 100 plus right. of us. <laughs> right. That's great. I I love the way you said that about even if you don't consider yourself disabled. Because Because I didn't even know. Like when I was going through this, I didn't know. I didn't consider myself disabled. I'm like, what? I can function. I can, you know, I'm struggling, but I can work. I can drive. I can, you know, whatever. I had no idea that I had legal rights. Right. That's huge. And I didn't either. So I get it. I, that's, that's huge. Yeah. And, and interestingly, you know, most employers don't know either because you walk in and I know I'm preaching to the choir on this. People look at you and they say, you look fine. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you know, so yes. they don't understand autoimmune disease. They don't understand that autoimmune disease actually, you know, that you actually have legal rights and yes. they have responsibilities as employers. So. Yeah. Yeah. And just to be clear, that is for businesses over 50 employees. Is that what you said? So under the ADA covers employers over 15. Oh, 15. Yes. Nice. Yeah. So okay. FMLA is over 50, five, zero. Okay. The ADA covers over 15, one, five. And that does not include like all government is covered, you know, so if you're government, yeah. any, any kind of state, local, federal government, you're, you're obviously covered hundred percent under this. Like it doesn't matter how many employees. Right. And awesome. if you provide some kind of, um, Ah, oh, what's the word I want to say? Like, um, like a shopping mall or a movie theater. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter how many employees you have. You you basically provide services to the the public. You have mm. to follow these laws. So. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Um. All right. I'm asked a lot if people should disclose their illness at work, and I was actually outed at work, which was shocking and awful at the moment. But I was in retrospect, very glad because for me trying to like keep a secret would have been too much stress. Right. And it also helped explain to my colleagues why I would like wince in pain or worse for me, forget what I was saying in the middle of a presentation or, you know, why I was so tired all the time. But what do you tell people about disclosing their health conditions at work? 
So um, first of all, let me just say, I cannot give any kind of legal advice. So this is just two Good friends disclaimer. None talking. Of us. Yes. <laughs> right, right. Not a lawyer. Um, but my biggest advice to answer this question is you can't put the toothpaste back in the tube. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So once you disclose, it's out there. Yeah. Um, there's pros and cons. Um, so let me talk about the cons first. Okay. So let's say you decide not to disclose. And you have, uh, you know, some type of flare up or you have some type of performance issue and you can, if you do not disclose, you can get dinged on your performance evaluation. You can get fired for poor performance. Um, so if you don't disclose there, you are not protected. Mm -hmm. So you're not legally protected, I should say. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so if you don't disclose, that's entirely possible. Right. If you do disclose, the second you disclose, you are now protected under the Americans with Disabilities Act. Mm -hmm. um, both non-disclosure and disclosure, regardless of the law, people are still people. Mm -hmm. There's good people mm -hmm. and there are jerks, especially in the workplace. Mm -hmm. um, so either or, you still open yourself up to potential um, you know, bullying or discrimination. Truth. It, yeah. So yeah. I'm just putting it out there. The other thing too, like, let's say you put something on social media, right? You're, we're, you know, we're all on Facebook, you know, oh, I'm having a bad flare up day or, you know, whatever, mm -hmm. you know, you, you know, p your employer can get into your social media and right. look at that. So they yeah. could potentially find out, like, let's say you have a trusted colleague and let's say you're having a private conversation, someone overhears. So, you know, there's a lot of things to take into consideration. Also, you know, what's the temperature, not just of your health, but also your management. So if you're having some Good really point. bad flare ups, that might be a consideration to disclose. If mm -hmm. things are under control, you, you know, you may want to, you may not want to. Right. Yeah. Um, but then also is your management, you know, do you have supportive management or are they jerks? Right. So all of these kind of, yeah. Mm -hmm. it, you can't put the toothpaste Sticky back wicket. in the tube and that is my official advice. Right. I like <laughs> but it. there's a lot to think about, you know, there, there really is. And there's not one answer that's going to be, you know, well, cut and dry. You have to really think about a lot of different variables. Yes. And a scenario just came to mind as you were explaining about social media. And if you did not disclose at work, but they either overheard you speaking or, you know, came, came about that information some other way and you had not disclosed and they were shits, they could absolutely find a reason to get rid of you. Oh yeah. And you have no recourse at that point if you've not disclosed. So right. Yeah. That one hadn't occurred to me till just now. So thank you for the light bulb moment there. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. And and you know I always say jerk managers will find every way they can to make everyone's lives miserable. Truth, so. truth, truth. And um, supportive managers will go out of their way to do everything they can for you. So <laughs> I've had I've, I've had both. Yeah, yeah, me too. Probably <laughs> most people have. Oh yeah. Um, so what are some accommodations that individuals with autoimmune disease can ask for in the, in the workplace? And, and that brings up another weird question I have. I always hear the term reasonable accommodation. Who decides what's reasonable? Well, that's actually the, the, what decides reasonable is between you and the, uh, and your manager or your employer and ah. HR. So, I mean, they, the managers or, or employers can, invoke what they call undue hardship, mm -hmm. um, which mostly under the law talks financially. It doesn't really yeah. talk logistically, okay. but they can, you know, they can talk logistically as well. Okay. Um, but, you know, for the most part, you can create any reasonable accommodation that you want. Like when I actually had cancer, I didn't ask for anything. Mm -hmm. And my management gave me reasonable, I didn't know what they were. I didn't know that they were called reasonable accommodations at the mm -hmm. time, mm -hmm. but my, my managers gave me reasonable accommodations without me even asking. So, um, and that was when I had cancer. Yeah. So, and um, that was the earlier management, right? The good managers. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, so, but think about, and I kind of say, think about your world and if you could wave a magic wand and create the ideal work situation, what would mm -hmm. it look like? Mm -hmm. So, and, you know, again, you said, you know, with MS, I mean, every autoimmune disease is different. Every right. day is different. Yeah. Um, I, I really try to focus on chronic fatigue, chronic pain. Those are, I think, the two biggest ones that are 
you know, predominant across the board. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, there's IBS, there's uh, Mm -hmm. brain fog, you know, things like that. So, um, but for fatigue and pain, um, typically what I like to say, the, the first line of reasonable accommodations are flexible work hours and flexible breaks. Mm-hmm. So, you know, for some people, like for me, my energy is full on first thing in the morning. Mm-hmm. So, you know, me for me, working the five to two shift was just, you know, perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Yes. And which sounds, you know, crazy pants to anyone else. They're like, what? I wouldn't, well, we're a military family. We're up at four in the morning right. anyway, right? right? For some people, you know, it takes them half a day to get their groove on. Right. And their energy comes later in the day. So if you can work out a schedule with your employer, mm-hmm. you know, based on, you know, kind of a typical day for you, you know, is your energy better in the morning or is it better in the afternoon? Like, right. can you come in early? Can you come in late? And then also, you know, working out a situation where maybe you can work from home a couple days a week yeah. or work from home if you have a flare up, mm-hmm. you know, and I always say, you know, I've, I've spent plenty of days in the bed with a laptop, yep. you know, I even three, four five hours, mm-hmm. you know, it's better than taking oh, yeah. in eight hours of sick leave. Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so that's, that's kind of the big one and also even breaks. So a lot of companies have, you know, required 45 minutes for lunch or an hour for lunch. So instead of taking that full hour, which most of us twiddle our thumbs anyway, and, right. you know, sit at our desk and work through lunch, um, you know, use that time for various breaks. So let's say, you know, you've got four 15 minute breaks throughout the day versus one whole hour in the middle of the day. Yeah. Makes sense. So know thine own self and picture the perfect world, go in and ask for that. And I would imagine asking for everything (laughs) is a good idea because they, they would potentially kind of negotiate down from there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and really kind of, like you said, know thyself and figure out what's going to work best for my situation, Mm -hmm. you know, individuals. And they also say that, um, you know, like the reasonable accommodation, basically you can do your job, um, Oh, what's this? With the reasonable accommodation, you can do your job, you know, basically productively as mm-hmm. if a normal, I hate saying normal, but you right. know, quote unquote, normal person right. could do it without a reasonable accommodation. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. So that's kind of what we're trying to get to. Right. Um, but, you know, in the, in the training course that I have, I also, you know, talk about things like, um, you know, refrigerators. So let's say, you know, you don't just have to have, um, you know, celiac or Crohn's, like a lot of us with autoimmune disease have IBS issues and mm-hmm. are on, you know, have gluten sensitivities. So asking for your own refrigerator, like one of those small mini refrigerators oh, so that you yeah. don't have cross contamination. Like these are things you don't think of, right? Right. But this isn't going to help you do your job better. It's just going to help you be safe. Yeah. So, you know, and these are things like these are reasonable accommodations that you can ask for. Hmm. Um, You know, if you're constantly running to the bathroom, can I get an office closer to the bathroom? If you have, you know, issues with like migraines to lower the lights in your area or to have a screen uh, guard glare Mm -hmm. thing or, you know, to get the uh, blue blocker glasses or, you know, things like that. There's a million different, you know, reasonable accommodations that, that can fit your situation based on, you know, the majority of your, you know, major symptoms. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so your resources in this book are, I mean, extensive. Oh, thank you. I especially appreciated that you included sample language for some accommodation requests like we were just talking about. So mm-hmm. you also included a lot of contact information of various resources that can help people dealing with these issues, but one in particular kept popping up throughout oh, yeah. your book. Can you tell us about JAN, the Job Accommodation Network, which P.S. I had not heard of, but I'm so excited to learn about? Oh my goodness. I know they are a hidden gem. So basically it's, it's, the website is askjan.org and they are the Job Accommodation Network. They are a nonprofit arm funded under the Department of Labor. And they've been established since the 80s and have, I think like 25 employees, give or take. And um, they can't give official legal advice, but they have, I mean, if you put the resources that they have Mm -hmm. stacked up on top of each other, you would, you would land on the moon. I mean, it's, yeah. Did you say they've been 
in place since the 80s? Since the 80s, yes. Wow, they need better marketing. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard of them. Wow. Yeah. So, um, but you know, the, the cool thing about them is they have resources for employers and they have resources for employees. So, um, you know, if you're a job seeker, if you are currently employed, or if you support someone who is, you know, if you're a caregiver, Mm -hmm. they have those resources and they, I mean, it's like I said, if you put the resources that they have on their website stacked up together, you would go to the moon. Like, <laughs> That's it's, awesome. What, but what's nice is that you can reach them via um, chat, via text, via mm. phone, via email. Like they have it all. And, and when, when you I, say via phone, do you mean like an actual human being answers the phone? An actual human being. So Shut I've the been front wor- door. I know, right? I've been working with them for the last three years on and off and just with, you know, guidance for the book and the training course and everything like that. Like they've been just, just insanely helpful to me getting the word out there. And, and I, you know, equally want to give back. Right. And, and, and you yeah. are. <laughs> but when I, when I call just the regular 800 number, when I call every single time it gets answered in two rings. Wow. A, and a human being answers, not a machine, not a, you know, phone tree, a yeah. human being answers. It's like they're rooms. still in the eighties. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Which is great. <laughs> that is great. I love that. Well, yeah, they are so helpful and you know, they, yeah. They, uh, you, you have a ton of resources, but it seems like that's a great place to start. Yes. <laughs> well, additionally, I want to let people know that when they purchase this phenomenal book, which P.S. everyone, you can like write on Amazon. And as always, I will have the show notes for this episode at FUMSnow.com forward slash podcast. And they're clickable. So I will have the link directly there for this book. Just click on it. Go get it. Just go get it. Just trust me. Go get it. You'll love it. So helpful. But when they purchase it, they'll actually receive a thank you gift of a bundle of books. It was so cool um, on various topics. I mean, they're awesome. So it's just go get the book. You get this bundle of books as, as a thank you. Uh, was I, oh, was that a surprise? Was I not so, <laughs> Was I not supposed to say anything about that? Because it was a surprise for me. I opened it up and went, Oopsie. oh my God, all of these. Oopsie. Like, Oops. <laughs> Do I need to edit that out? No, 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 no. No, we're good. We're good. In fact, yes, the, the, yeah, there's a bundle of books. You can get them, you know, when you buy the book, you can actually even get them if you don't buy the book. Um, should I give the URL or do you want to put oh, that in the show notes? Sure. Uh, both. You tell okay. them and I'll, yeah. Oh, I'll sure. I'll put it it's, in the show notes too. Yeah. It's uh, pinkfortitude.com slash thank, T-H-A-N-K. And yeah, we actually have over $100 now worth of free eBooks and printables and downloads. And I think my favorite one that your community is going to like is the ebook CEO, Your Chronic Illness Blueprint, Change Your Trajectory, Increase Productivity, and Maintain Balance. Very cool. Rock on. Well, I haven't had a chance to go through everything, but when I opened that up, I said, are you kidding me? I mean, like <laughs> as if this awesome book wasn't enough. Now I get all this stuff and too. thank you so. for your kind words. That's so, it's just so oh, sweet. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's wonderful. I have enjoyed this conversation so much, Holly, and I feel like we could just go on and on and chatting I know, I more know. and more, but thank you again for writing this book and for sharing your story and your knowledge with us. And I really appreciate it. Before you go, if you don't mind sharing with my audience, you're you're hosting a training course. You mentioned the course earlier mm-hmm. in the interview. You're hosting a training course on all of these topics. So how do people learn more about that course and about you and about your book and all things Holly Bertone? Oh, well, thank you. Well, first of all, pinkfortitude.com is kind of the, the one-stop the shop. Home. <laughs> and, uh, and, and just real quick with the course and your your I know your community is going to appreciate this. This course was put together with my laptop on the couch in between naps. <laughs> we do appreciate that. We, we do what we do to make yes, it happen, right? Yes, so, yep. um, but it's basically two training courses, one for employers, um, autoimmune disease in the workplace, responsibilities and disability awareness for employers, because not just employees, but I want the employers to know. Right. I want the employees to know what is going on in our community and how they can support us because to them, we look fine. So there's one training course for employers, but then there's also one for employees and it's a deeper dive than the book. So we go really deep into, you know, how to be supported in the workplace. It's called the employee's guide to managing autoimmune disease in the workplace. And both are on fortitude.academy. 
Very cool. Yep. And so Academy. in addition to taking it yourself, share it with your company <laughs> because yes, your employer exactly. could get this, get a lot out of this too. That's so cool. Well, again, I can't thank you enough for writing this and for sharing all of your hard fought knowledge that you've <laughs> acquired over the years um, and for sharing it here with the FUMS community. Thank you so much, Holly. I really appreciate it. And thank you, Kathy, so much for having me on and for, you know, getting the word out and just, you know, also for your advocacy as well. I mean, the, you know, the world needs people like you and just, you know, helping others in our situation. So oh, very sweet. Thanks so much. And thanks again. And everybody go get that book. FUMS is at a crossroads. If you find value in this podcast and want to see it continue, please show your support with a monthly contribution like in lieu of a cup of coffee or two for the month. It would mean that what I'm doing is actually valuable and making a difference and would be missed if I were to shut it down. I've even put together some cool giveaways and perks in exchange for contributions at various levels. Please check it out, help if you can, and let's keep FUMS going. Show your support at patreon.com forward slash FUMS. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com forward slash F-U-M-S. And thanks in advance for your support. Thanks, everybody. I really appreciate you listening to the F-U-M-S podcast show. Be sure to subscribe to it so you won't miss an episode. You can do that right on the website at F-U-M-S now dot com. While you're there... Sign up for the free email list so you'll be among the first to know of any new findings in MS research, new therapies and products, as well as any blog posts and podcast episodes I release. Want to chat with others in the FUMS community? Join us on Facebook at FUMS Now. Thanks again, and don't forget to talk to the stupid disease as it deserves. Tell it FUMS every day.